The Christmas Saurus by Tom Fletcher. Chapter 9. Brenda the Revenger. On the way home that same snowy Friday afternoon, Mr Trundle had to pop into the supermarket. William wheeled himself straight to his favourite aisle, the breakfast cereal aisle. He could spend hours there, choosing which box to take home. Chocolate-covered frosty ones or frosty-covered chocolate ones were his favourite, although his dad usually made him get something with less frosty chocolate stuff and more fruity grain stuff. William thought those ones tasted like bird food. On this particular day, William had just wheeled himself to the end of the cereal aisle for the seventh time, lost in feelings of emptiness and worries about his lonely dad when he had giggling behind him. He spun his wheelchair round and stared down the long aisle of breakfast munch, but there was no one there. How odd. Suddenly, some scurrying footsteps rushed past, but by the time he'd whizzed his chair round, whoever it was had gone. Hello, William called, but no one answered. He was just about to go to find his dad when he saw something rather strange out of the corner of his eye. Something white and floaty was coming towards him from the far end of the cereal aisle at great speed. He couldn't quite make out what it was. He'd never seen anything like it before. It was large and white and floating through the air, continuously changing shape, wibbling and blobbing like a thick, wet ghost. William froze in his wheelchair. He didn't know what to do. He felt completely helpless as this weird blob of whiteness flew through the air towards him until... Sploosh! William was hit square in the face by a flying, supersized tub of double-thick, extra-creamy pouring cream. You wouldn't believe how much cream there was. However much you're imagining it, double it, then add a bit more, and that's still probably not quite enough. William was coated from head to toe. He looked like a delicious ghost. But that wasn't all. The flying wave of dairy hit him with such force that it sent his wheelchair whooshing backwards, slipping and sliding on the cream-covered floor of the cereal aisle until he smashed into the shelves. Luckily, the cardboard boxes of his favourite frosted cocoa drops crumpled behind him, softening the impact. But as one box fell over, it knocked another box, which knocked over the next box, and the one after that, until suddenly every box was knocking over every box next to it, like a crazy game of breakfast cereal dominoes. The boxes fell one after the other. There was an almighty crash as clouds of flakes and puffs of corn and oats filled the air. Shoppers ran for the fire escapes in a frosted flake frenzy, the likes of which had never been seen before. And right in the middle of the commotion was William, covered from head to toe in double thick, extra creamy pouring cream, sprinkled with every sort of breakfast cereal you could possibly imagine. Then, just as William thought it was all over, the unusual amount of whole grain dust in the air set off the fire sprinklers and the aisles were flooded with freezing water. The water mixed with the double thick extra creamy cream transforming the supermarket into the world's largest bowl of cereal. Within 10 minutes officials from Guinness World Record showed up, confirmed it and hung a plaque on the wall. William knew there was only one person mean enough to throw cream at someone in a supermarket while they are choosing their cereal. At that moment the water from the sprinklers showered away some of the thick dairy from his eyes just in time for him to see the long golden twirls of Brenda Payne as she skipped merrily away and made her escape through the fire exit. Mr Trundle wheeled his sad, soggy son home through the crowded, snow-covered streets. Mums and dads wandered merrily with their children through the falling snowflakes with that twinkle of Christmas magic in their eyes. But William couldn't help feeling absolutely rotten. Feeling rotten is much worse than feeling just bad or sad. Feeling rotten is when it seems like no one else in the world understands how you're feeling. When you're feeling rotten, everything seems rotten around you. For example, can you think of the tastiest, scrummiest, yummiest, cheesiest cheeseburger you've ever had? Well, even if William had eaten that exact same cheeseburger right then, it would have tasted absolutely rotten to him. That's how rottenly rotten he was feeling. Everyone feels rotten from time to time, and that's perfectly okay. But no little boy or girl should feel rotten at Christmas time. That's just rotten. Right then, William didn't care about Christmas. In fact, at that moment, he didn't feel like caring much about anything at all. William just wanted to go to his rotten home and go to rotten bed. With their heads full of worries, Mr Trundle and William trundled home, unaware that somewhere close behind them, hiding in the shadows, someone was watching them. William was being followed.